This console generation has brought us some great games, but it's also brought some stinkers. Let's talk about the ones on Microsoft's console. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the top 10 worst Xbox One games of all time. Number 10 is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. Oh, is there so many things that you could say about Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5, but I'm just gonna say the one that bothers me probably the most. The fact that Grind is also basically like a Super Mario butt stomp. That's the main thing. That's the main problem I have with the game. I mean, the controls aren't very tight. It doesn't consistently do what you think it's going to do, which is a big problem in a game that's based entirely around basically performing combos while accounting for the game's physics. I mean, that's literally what Tony Hawk's Pro Skater as a franchise is. And even when the games themselves are a little bit questionable in their framing, that's the thing they always get right. And Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 did not get that right, or even kind of right, or even right enough to not hate the game, because I hate it. It's such a bad game. Partly because it was hyped up to be a return to form, a back to basics Tony Hawk game, but the modes were boring, the levels weren't fun, the online multiplayer was forced at best, and it felt low budget. Tony Hawk, both the person and the franchise, deserves more than this game. And not in a, this game doesn't live up to my personal taste way, or in a way where I'm just like, I need Tony Hawk to be exactly what it always was in order to like it. No, I can accept some changes, but it has to work and not be changes that are utterly bizarre and interfere with the controls. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 just, it does none of that. It pretty much in every way just seems like nobody cared about the project at all. It sucks. Number nine is Fighter Within, a game you may not remember, but I do. Have you ever thought, hey, you know it'd be great? A Kinect fighting game. Well, if you didn't before, you may have just thought it now. I know just saying that question actually sounds like a decent idea. And in truth, the Kinect itself almost kind of sounds like a good idea too. Neither are, but they kind of sound like it. So when you play Fighter Within, you don't feel within the fighter. You're basically watching things happen as you maybe trigger them to happen. And I say maybe because the best way I can say this is good luck. The Kinect is certainly capable of doing a good job tracking gestures, but this game isn't, and it also proves just how much of a disaster a Kinect game that isn't like, pick up the ball and throw it at the background can be. Oh, and did I mention it has a story? Yeah, it does. I'm gonna actually stop there, it would be better for you. No, genuinely, it's that bad. The game is actually fun because it is as bad as it is. Although when games are so bad they're good, it doesn't last as long as with movies. Number eight is Ghostbusters, and no, I don't mean the Xbox 360 Ghostbusters game that the Xbox One is backwards compatible with, no. The 360 game, genuinely enjoyable. The 2016 Xbox One game that literally has nothing to do with any of the film series, original or reboot. I mean, sure, you could make a case that it has something to do with the reboot, but just because it mentions the reboot very briefly and decides to have the reboot bad guy despite the fact that they, I think, killed him? I don't know. I'm not going to even try to pretend that I know what's going on. Nobody who has anything to do with any movie is anywhere in sight other than the bad guy, and I don't know why he's there, but that's just the confusion that is the story, I guess. Have you ever played like a twin stick shooter that wasn't made with love or care? Well, if that's the experience you're looking for, then Ghostbusters for the Xbox One is the game for you. There is nothing of any value in this game. It is a waste of time. And the developer went bankrupt three days after it came out. Gee, I wonder why. Number seven is Road Rage a game that was a successor to Road Rash. Road Rash being an old Sega Genesis game that was released on several other platforms through the years as a series and frankly was fun. It wasn't brilliant or artistic. It was a motorcycle racing game that you more or less battled with the other motorcycle racers with bats and stuff. Road Rage, I guess, is an all right title, but it sort of removes the thing that makes it specific to motorcycles, 
The title Road Rash is specifically referencing a kind of burn you can get if you fall off of a motorcycle, whereas road rage is just something you get when you're annoyed and you're on the road. It's pretty symbolic for exactly what this game is versus the original too. It takes everything identifiable from the original, gets rid of it, and you end up annoyed on the road, I guess on a motorcycle. Like way back in the day, a game didn't have to have perfect physics, but the way old games kind of simulated physics, i.e. cheaply, was always predictable and workable. Yeah, no, throw that out, that's gone. It's not predictable, it's not workable. The physics in this game are just downright bad. That's kind of one of the highlights of why it's unplayable. But it also doesn't look very good, and it really doesn't sound very good. Basically, it's a game that looks kinda like it might've worked graphically on the original Xbox, although I'm guessing the gameplay would've gotten panned there as well. Number six, hey, did you know it's possible to have good ideas and do them badly? That's right, it's Alakine's Gun. This game felt ambitious. The atmosphere of it is good. You play a KGB operative taking part in covert operations during the Cold War. It's a stealth game that promises to be somewhat like Hitman in some way, but eh. while the aesthetic is good, the graphics aren't. While the gameplay ideas are good, the execution isn't. And although the story actually doesn't flounder, the overall experience really just doesn't get anywhere near living up to that. The game itself is actually just bad. It's not good at all. It's got a bad menu system. It's got a bad HUD. The controls are very awkward. For instance, there's a move in the game that lets you see where their enemies are just for a short period of time, but activating it, which you would think would be like clicking a stick or holding down a trigger and selecting it from like a wheel menu or something. No, it's actually a button combo, which if it was a fighting game would make sense. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but only a little bit. It's really a bad controller layout. It uses some conventions and then just throws some other crap at you, which considering how bad this game is at keeping track of where things are and how easily enemies just sort of forget that anything's going on at all, it's bad and it sucks because it's one of those games where you're like, this could be good, it sounds cool, but then when you play it, you're like, ooh, I was wrong. Number five is Troll and I. Oh, Troll and I. The puzzle platforming action adventure game. So I'm gonna go ahead and say like, I really love the name Troll and I. I think that's a great original sounding game name and I wish more developers and publishers would spend time trying to come up with naming conventions like that. Genuinely, I do mean this, but this is a game that looks like trash doesn't make sense and disorient you a lot. It makes you craft stuff, but not give you much to use for crafting. And like you can break stone walls with wooden spears. And you've got this big troll companion that looks like something off Nintendo 64. I guess Xbox 360 style fire. Sometimes it feels like it's trying to be uncharted. And then it's like, nah, actually you should summon a monster and the monster will do something for you. Now what I'm describing could possibly be a good game, but it's not. And I don't think I'd rag on the graphics if the gameplay was good, but it's not. Like Alakine's Gun, it has the potential to be a good game with some really cool ideas, but... So is this it? You're wanting to kill me too? Legend says you eat people. It makes sense. I eat boar. You eat me. The execution of ideas and some strange design choices, some really strange design choices, just hold it back. Besides that kind of waste of a crafting system, the co-op implementation doesn't take advantage of the two character dynamic even a little. And any action involving the troll just doesn't look or feel good, which again, because it's something with potential is just a huge bummer. Number four, remember how Agony looked good? And then like anybody who played it for a short period of time was like, this is bad. This is very bad. I have talked to so few people who thought thought this was a decent game. And everybody kind of had sky high expectations for it because the stuff that we saw prior to release was this very high concept, violent, gory, bloody, kind of sexualized hell. 
but the game itself is so much more of all of that in a way that actually is less appealing than it sounds. Like when you go in for a thing and they've got like way more of that thing than you expected and you actually don't like the thing once you're in there, that's what agony is. I don't know how to put it in any other way. It's trying so hard and it fails. It's stealth based, but the enemy AI is so unreliable and there's not much to go on that it feels like a really broken stealth game. Especially when you can't see anything and you get one hit killed a lot. Stealth can of course be challenging, that's kind of the point of a lot of these types of games in general. But it has to be fun too, and here it felt tedious and tacked on. Number 3 is Metal Gear Survive, which, yeah, probably one of the best series in the history of video games minus its creator, plus zombies with unicorn horns. Yeah, I just, uh, whenever I think of this game, I just, my brain overloads. Nothing about it is good. And this is a game that, like, I think was kind of gone at with the kid gloves. Like, if you look at reviews, they're like, there's elements of this that are good. No, it's just a incredibly tedious survival game. It is somehow found a small community in respect to them. The mechanics and engine of Metal Gear Solid 5 are obviously amazing, but cynically forcing it to be a survival game just rubbed a lot of fans the wrong way, including myself. Number two is Past Cure. Hey, do you have nightmares? Do you really hate creepy porcelain men without, like, features? I mean, those can kind of be scary if you're not pissed off at how loose everything is like other than the fact it has kind of cool graphics but it kind of wants to be the evil within and quantum break at the same time i guess i mean i'm sure there's other influences because it seems to want to go in every possible direction at once and being it never picks up momentum in any direction it never does anything it's a game that i mean you could write it drawing plot beats out of a bucket it sucks there are a few interesting parts but mostly it's just not fun to play through it feels like a chore and gameplay wise it loses steam pretty quickly after starting starting fairly decent, and the payoff is just, it's not worth trudging through at all. And finally, number one is Gene Rain, a Gears of War ripoff with a timeline that just jumps around like, hey, you don't really need to know what's going on. That's not what a story's about. And hey, also, you know what? The subtitles don't have to match anything that's being said at all. Also, pressing the cover button doesn't always do that. It doesn't always enter cover. Isn't that wild, guys? It's not got terrible graphics, I gotta give it that. It's an interesting, original looking world, but the story's bad, the acting is worse. There are technical problems that actually aren't fully bug oriented. They're just kind of shoddy planning. I will say this is the one game on the list that the dialogue and just how bad everything is makes it just kind of funny in a way that makes it kind of worth going through, at least some of it. So like, if you like the room, this game is, well, let's just say it's the equivalent. This is as close as it's going to get to so bad it's good in a game. Cause that voice acting, just wow. Carter Cockle, enter the password. Open the memory of Black Hole. You want to get all of these people killed just because of memory of 20 years ago? Fine. Put down your gun. I will give you these memories. But if some games are the best, then some have to be the worst, right? What's the worst game you've played on Xbox One? Is it one of these? Did you dislike something else even more? I mean, it is a taste issue, so your opinion is relevant here. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. And if you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe and the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.